Hi, why? Why is internet filled with fake garbage like this guy making a fake generator to charge a cell phone? He glues two magnets to a motor shaft, solders a wall adapter to his motor, makes a copper coil and solders a 5 volt voltage regulator to it, as well as a cell phone USB connector, plugs them into the cell phone and turns the motor on and apparently the f***ing rotating magnet generates enough electricity to charge the phone. He's not alone though, there is a whole army of idiots out there, like this one who claims putting broken china in milk for two days mends it completely together. This video got over 144 million views on Facebook. My entire channel has 88 million. You know, one of my relatives fell for it and tried it, just to be left with the same broken pieces now smelling like a rotten cow. Videos like these waste everyone's time and resources because now everyone wants to try them. Obviously, milk doesn't mend china. All they did was to replace the broken plate with a good one and they tried to match the location of the red tapes. See? In the same video, they have a bunch of other tips that could actually work. And then they leave this fake garbage in there too. Making fake news is an art. One of my friends once told me that the best lie is the one that's wrapped in truth. A bunch of good tips makes everyone believe in the one horribly fake one. Now please don't take this wisdom and start making fake sh**. So that's what the milk guy did. Why? I mean I know why, they are looking for the juicy YouTube money and views. But you have to be at a certain level of evil to be willing to waste time and resources in such a great scale. Have you seen Theo Joe's videos? He has an entire channel dedicated to fake technology with more than one and a half million subscribers. Like how to double your internet speed or charge your phone in no time all by wrapping aluminum foil and a bunch of wires around sh it's gonna let you recharge your phone almost instantly. You're obviously going to need your phone, normal charging cable, tin foil, some sort of wire. You just wanna take your phone and just wrap the cord around, get your tin foil, and just wrap this around your phone. We're gonna plug this in for about 10 seconds. 78% is pretty good for going from 1% up to 78. At least now he mentions his videos are fake and joke in the video description. So less evil maybe? But whoever reads the video description first before trying? Such people waste time of people like me too who have to debunk their sh**. Except that every time I make a debunk video I also get the juicy YouTube money. But that's not the point. Anyways, let's get back to the fake phone charger. It looks like a generator but it's not. Now you might say, this guy looks like a decent guy who made a good generator. I mean, why should you trust me who almost kill myself in every video? Everyone knows moving a magnet beside a coil generates electricity and he even tried to use a 5 volt regulator to have a proper charging voltage. Unlike me who killed my phone trying to make a hand crank charger with no regulator. Just shut up, just shut up. There are a million reasons why this is fake. Well, first, it doesn't matter. If you have a 5 volt wall adapter, you can just directly plug it to your phone and charge it. Why turn a generator with it to charge the phone? But that's not the point. Let me tell you how a generator works. If you have magnetic fields like this, and a wire moves and cuts them perpendicular to the magnetic fields, then the electricity is generated in the wire. But if the wire is not perpendicular to the fields, only the field vector that is perpendicular to the wire makes electricity in the wire. So if your wire is moving parallel to the fields, it doesn't create electricity at all. The way the guy has it set up, if we have the coil like this and look at the magnet from the bottom, then the fields would be coming out like this. So if we rotate the magnet... Is that Uranus? What? <laughs> Get out! We need a 3D representation of the magnet. Here is my paper magnet and the paper magnetic fields going from one pole to the other. And this is my coil. Now if I insert the magnet into the coil like this, you see that the coil will have to cut through the magnetic fields and that creates electricity. But if I rotate the magnet like this, centered to the coil, you see that the coil doesn't necessarily cut any magnetic field, so no electricity. If you rotate the magnet 90 degrees and insert it into the coil, you see the coil cuts into magnetic fields, but it's pretty useless because it is cutting into opposing magnetic fields. So the magnetic fields push electrons this way on one side and the other way on the other side and they cancel each other. 
Also, if you turn the magnet like this, it's pretty useless because the coil doesn't cut into any magnetic fields. So using these, you see that the guy has set up his magnet the worst way that creates the least electricity, if any. The actual generators have their magnets set up like this into the coil and they turn this way. Let me show you the actual electricity generated in a coil on my scope, which I love and cherish. I'll give away three of these at the end of my video. I have a bunch of magnets that are polarized like this, north on one side and south on the other side. So if I stack them together like this, it'll give me a big magnet. If I want to know where the north of the magnet is, I just put it on a string and let go, and it turns towards the north, which is in that direction behind me. Now if I shove the magnet into the coil, I see that the voltage is generated. And the faster I go, the higher the amplitude, like this. What the f are you doing? What? Just close the door next time. What? Now let's make the same setup as the guy in the video. I put my two magnets on a nail like this and will rotate it with my drill. Now if I turn the magnet center to the coil, I only get tiny fluctuations because my magnet or coil are not perfect. But if I shift it to one side, I'll get higher voltages. And in the best case, if I turn it like this, I'll get the maximum voltage. And that's how the generators work. The other reason his generator is a piece of shit is that something like this doesn't generate any significant voltage. The best I was able to capture was around 60 millivolts. You need many more number of turns and a very good inductor core to capture most of the energy. The other reason is that, as you saw on the scope, such a generator outputs an AC voltage. You need a full bridge rectifier first to convert it into DC before converting it into 5 volt using the regulator he used. You can get your full bridge rectifier from the link below. It's not gonna rectify anything though, it's just a shirt. Not only we need to rectify AC into DC first, we need a DC level more than 5 volts to be able to use the linear regulator he used in his video. And all we got was around 60 millivolt peak. I assure you, his generator is a garbage. But wait, another nail in the coffin. This is the hand crank phone charger I made in my other video. It has an actual generator that outputs to a rectifier circuit. The DC generated goes to a 5 volt switching regulator that outputs to a USB port for charging the phone. It turns freely like this. But as soon as I plug it in to charge the phone, it, it is much harder to turn because it's taking power from me to charge the phone. Somewhere around 3 watts of power. But his motor doesn't slow down a bit under the charging load when he brings the coil close. And finally, the last nail in his coffin. Fine, let's assume he's making enough electricity and he's taking current from the coil charging the phone. That current through the coil makes its own magnetic fields that interferes with the rotating magnets. See like this, I'm running some current through the coil and when I bring the magnet close, it jumps around like this. But his coil is not moving at all. All I'm saying is that he made a fake phone charger. And now a word from the makers of the world's most expensive cell phone chargers, Keysight. We at Keysight like to charge our phones in style. Some of us like to use the $450 cell phone charger, but I like to use the $450,000 KGB grade Nacho Mama cell phone charger. Definitely on some sort of list now. Giveaway time! I always wanted to have a scope since I was a baby to see exactly what's continuously f***ing me off. This thing teaches you electronics. That's why I like to give you three more of these fantastic Keysight scopes. It's more than just any scope. It has a 20 MHz function generator, a frequency counter, and much more. This time, one goes to you, the viewers, and the other two go to my patrons at patreon.com, which you could be one too. For the viewers, I know an oscilloscope is not for everyone. So if you really like it, you have to enter the draw by subscribing to Keysight Oscilloscope's channel, and also leave a comment under my video saying that you want it. Something like, give me that key sight. I know, I'm not very creative either. Do your best and good luck. 
For more practical oscilloscope tips and less bushy eyebrow wagging, come join me on the Keyside Oscilloscope's YouTube channel.